everyone. Today we're going to learn another useful regular function which is the split function. We use the split function to split string by the occurrences of pattern. If capturing parentheses are used in the pattern, then the text of all groups in the pattern is also returned as part of the resulting list. As I did in my previous videos. I removed brackets, double quotes, and apostrophes. I left the commas. So you can see elements start and end in the list result. Also, we're going to see another concept which is looking ahead. Look behind and also look around. This concept is not only for split function but you use it in all regex functions. I named it PySplit. And it has six parameters. Text and pattern are mandatory. First occurrence. Last occurrence. Flags. And drop underscore seps are optional. I added drop underscore seps which means remove separators. Apostrophes. And commas from the list result because. Without apostrophes and commas it's hard to read the list elements. Once you determine which element or elements you want as result you can remove all apostrophes and commas altogether from the result by passing number 1 in the last parameter drop seps. So you will get a nice and clean result. By default, the first occurrence is 0. The last occurrence is the last element in the list result. The flags parameter is nothing. And the drop seps is 0. For people who know regular expressions, you can see clearly that I'm not using max split from the original regex split because the first occurrence and last occurrence parameters give me more control to slice the list result and extract the part that I want and convert it to a string. I will show you what I mean as we progress with the video. Without wasting more time, let's get started. Okay. As the first example, I want to split the text in A2 by a space which is backslash S. As you can see as a result I have a bunch of texts between commas. These texts are all elements of a returned list result. But you should be careful about the string commas inside text A2. Like the first comma after Bob. This comma is a string and not a list separator. Let's play a little bit with the elements. Let's say I want the first element in the list. I can leave the first occurrence empty. And pass in number 1 as the last occurrence. I don't need flags for the moment. Hit OK. Well. Bob comma matches the first element. Let's change the value of the last occurrence and see what gives as. Well. Now I think you've got the idea. Let's move to the next example number 2. This time I want to split our text by a point. By leaving drop underscore seps empty or equals to 0. So you can understand how the function works. PySplit puts each element between single quotes and separate elements by a comma. Also. You can easily grab the part of the text you want by using the first and last occurrence. Example number 3. We want to split by a comma. As you may notice, we have only two commas in the whole text. So the list result has three elements. The name Bob at the beginning of the text. The second element from Dave to corporation uppercase. And the third element is the rest. Example number 4. Another useful pattern. Using brackets gives us the opportunity to split text on multiple delimiters. In this example, I'm using comma and space. 
Let's play with the elements to have a clear idea. In example number 5, backslash comma backslash s plus means that both comma and at least one space are required to match the regex pattern. In this case, I have only three elements as result. Look at the result when I add a question mark after the comma. It makes it optional. In other words, PySplit function will look after multiple syntaxes. Comma one space. Comma more spaces. One space or more spaces. This way we have more flexibility in the result. <laughs> Example number 6. This time I want to split our text by its symbol or a point. As you can see. Elements are separated by single quotes and commas. However elements that contain an apostrophe don't have single quotes. You should be aware of it. Example number 7. Another useful pattern. Using parentheses gives us the opportunity to split text by the pattern inside and also returned as part of the resulting list in this example. I'm using comma, space, and point as delimiters. And I'm putting three uppercase letters between parentheses. Let's take a look at the first and the second element in the list result. Bob, comma, space, Dave, and spaces the first element and the word and uppercase matched the second element. And both first and the second elements match the whole pattern. As you can see, what is inside parentheses also returned as part of the list result. Example number eight. Same syntax as the previous example. I have here two words phone number both in lowercase inside parentheses. And I'm using ri.i flags to ignore case sensitive. OK, let's see the result. Example number 9. I want to show you that I can use a mixed pattern. Words. And different syntaxes. In this example. I'm looking for the word, and, or a bunch of numbers with or without dashes or multiple spaces. I'm using re.i flags. Now let's see the result. Examples. 10, 11, 12, and 13 give you an idea of how PySplit function works using regular expressions. The last few examples are about look ahead, look behind, and look around in regular expressions. By the way, these concepts can be used in any function in the regex. I'm using a simple pattern. So you can understand what is the purpose of using such approach. Let's start with example number 14. Positive look behind. We use a question mark. Less than symbol and equals sign. Look behind tells the regex engine to temporarily step backward in the string. 
to check if the text inside the look behind can be matched there. The first element in the list result shows clearly what's going on here. Regex found Dave followed by its symbol. It matches perfectly our pattern. And it looked backward for the first two characters. Whether they are alphanumeric or not. So VE followed by its symbol. Is totally matches regex requirements. And the same for CH followed by its symbol in the last email in the text. Example number 15 is about negative look behind. I'm using almost the same pattern. Only I'm changing equals sign by an exclamation mark. So what it does is. It tells regex the same as the previous example. But this time the two characters shouldn't be both alphanumeric. If you look at the text. We can see that the first and the third email fulfill this requirement. Because dash and dot in the other emails are not alphanumeric characters. Example number 16 is about positive look ahead. I'm trying to keep the same pattern so you can see the difference between look ahead and look behind. Now in this example I want the character after its symbol should be a letter from a to h lowercase. If not regex will skip it. Well. I've got two elements as result. The second and the third email in the text. I think you've got the picture. Example number 17 is about a negative look ahead. In this example, I want the character after its symbol shouldn't be a letter from letter A to letter H lowercase. If not regex will skip it. Well, the first and the last email in the text fulfill regex requirements. Example number 18 and the last for today's video. About look around. Look around actually matches characters. But then gives up the match. Returning only the result. In this example. I'm looking for every at symbol in the text. And then look positive behind if there is a letter from B to H. Then look positive ahead and see if there is a letter from G to T. Also I'm using re.i as flags. As you can see in the list result. We have two email matches. The third and the last email in the text. So let's wrap up. Regular expression functions are very powerful. And using them in Microsoft Excel will boost your work. And save your time. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.